Howdy mates, good afternoon, how are we all doing? Here's a part two video for today. I'm actually visiting another park that I've never been to, which is also over by Bradenton. We're visiting a site known as the Emerson Point Preserve. I had to wait for a second for the phone to switch to my side. So, Emerson Point Preserve actually has quite of a rich history as well. Especially when it comes to indigenous history. So, Emerson Point and Preserve in particular dates back clear to 800 AD. Which stands for Anno Domini. So, the types of natives that were known to inhabit here were called the Timuka. I, in terms of whether that is the correct pronunciation, I can't answer that question right away. Anyways, the Timuka were a great example of natives who lived with their land. You know, fortunately, they were in a position where they really did not have to farm that much because Emerson Point Preserve borders with both Terracia Bay to the north and then just to the south is Manatee River and then just to the west is where it finally meets up with Tampa Bay itself. So you figure with all those different water bodies that are close to one another, you could say that the waters were very rich in basically aquatic life. Whether they were gastropods, bivalves, mollusks, crustaceans, fish, basically anything that you can think of. It was all abundant. And you gotta figure too, water at that time was not contaminated in any way, shape, or form. So as it got into the mid-1800s, an individual by the name of Edward Sneed, and actually the name of this island is Sneed Island, he purchased a portion of the land and he stayed here. But then we fast forward into the 1850s, approximately. Uh, individual by the name of Stuart Griffith and his wife, they basically they built a home here, and ironically enough, it was actually the home was built on top of a Timuka mound, which is actually still protected to this day. But the ironic part to me is they wanted to try protecting the mound, but why would they build their house on top of it? Perhaps they did that as a way to protect their home from any storms. Because you gotta figure, you know, hurricanes still happened back then. This is my thought. But anyway, the mound is now known as the Poitvatant Mound, if I'm not mistaken. Because shortly after the Griffiths moved out, an individual, an individual by the name of June Poivetant, who was a retired steamboat captain, moved and purchased more land on this island. So just to, for all of you to know, the mound that is here, it is listed under the National Register of Historic Places. And since it has that designation, it is illegal to vandalize or collect anything that is from that mound. And it is noted that it is apparently a ceremonial mound. So it wasn't used for burial. It was more of a traditional mound. But here on this particular trail, 
we're really seeing a great example of basically a coastal hammock. So a coastal hammock has the same concept of a hardwood hammock, but the difference with a coastal hammock is it's a lot closer to the water. Whereas most hardwood hammocks are found to be a little more inland. So, of course, what you'll commonly see in coastal hammocks are the mangroves. Sable palms and even some live oaks, too. So you have to figure, much of the flora that is found here is very salt tolerant. Otherwise, any... Other plants that can't tolerate those conditions, they can't survive here. Oh, looks like... This almost looks like an example of a... Uh, of Mersing, almost. I believe it is. But, yeah. You see all that maze right there? These are all red mangroves. They're always the closest to the water. And apparently it is noted that they are not known to excrete salt. And given that they are always bound by the water, that's why they have all those prop roots that you're seeing. Yeah. Like, right. Well, hold on. Let me show a better example. Yeah. Like all of this in here. It's quite amazing just how well they can adapt to their particular environment. Yeah, look at this. I believe it is noted. You see like those right there, those little, they look like burls. I believe those are particular salt deposits in which the red mangrove stores the salt pretty sure if I'm not mistaken but anyways if you guys ever have a chance to check out this park it's a pretty cool one I must say I am I'm impressed and this is only just the start of it so I'm sure that there will be more on the way so, all right take care you guys and once again journey on a journey is onwards take care folks See ya.